Hello everyone. In this new video, we will be making a crystal shader. Let's start with this. We will keep the modeling simple. Add a cylinder object and change the sides to 8. Switch to edit mode. Add a edge loop in the middle with Ctrl R. Press 1 and select all the vertices at the top and at the bottom. Press S to enable the scale tool and press Shift Z to scale in X and Y axis only. Move the mouse to make both ends smaller. Scale along Z axis to make the height more. Select the middle edge loop, Ctrl B to bevel it. Add one edge loop in it. You can either move the inner edge loop inside or outside. I will move the object above the grid. In the modifier tab, add a bevel modifier so the edges have extra details. Increase the segments to 2 or 3. Use the limit method to none or angle. Just see all the edges are beveled. This will help the object to receive more highlights along the edges. Right click and select Shade Smooth. Ctrl A for the transform menu and reset the scale so the material shading does not distorts. This completes the modeling part. Now switch to the rendered view. The scene will be gray at first as there is no lighting and materials yet. I will split the viewport into two sections. In the right viewport, change it to shader editor. We will be able to see the material changes on the model in the left view. Let's add an environment HDR light. For this, go to world settings. From the color property, add an environment texture node. I will be using a free HDR map from Polyheaven. I have added a link for it in the video description. You can use the same one as it seems to give better results for this tutorial. Once the HDR map loads, you can see our model is getting light from it. We will hide the background image later in the video as we will be using a solid color for the background. With the object selected, create a new material. Rename it to Crystal Outside. Use any color for base. I will be using green color. Reduce the roughness value to make the object more reflective. From the normal point, drag to add a Veronite texture node with position. It should connect to the normal property. You can see our model is covered with a textured pattern. Change the type from 3D to 2D. Increase the scale value to around 10. Feel free to change any other settings to see the different results. With the Veronai texture node selected, press Ctrl T to add a mapping and a texture coordinate node. In the texture coordinate node, connect the object type to vector. Mapping node gives the ability to change the scale rotation values, although we do not need it to change anything here. In the transmission, set the weight value to 1. This will allow light to pass through and making the object transparent. We can increase the coat value a little with a low roughness for some additional reflections. The sheen property can be set to around 0.5. Use any color for the tint. A colored effect will be visible around the edges of the object.
There are a few more material settings which we can use. In the material side panel, scroll down to the render method and enable ray trace transmission. Let's change the index of refraction to see how it affects the look of the object. If we reduce the refraction value to 1, then the material will become like a clear glass. Increasing the index value will affect the refraction and add distortion. Going back in the rendered properties, one new setting added in Blender now is ray tracing. Enable it. It improves the overall reflection and refraction quality. Here there is a denoising feature as well. I will disable it as it makes the crystal effect more blurry which we don't need it here. However, disabling denoising will add some visual noise. In previous versions of Blender, there was a setting called ambient occlusion. It was removed in new versions and brought under fast GI setting. It is now available in the method menu. Scroll down to color management. I will use the filmic mode with a high contrast setting. This is just my personal preference, but you can use any other color mode if you like to. Next, we will add an object that will be visible inside the crystal. I will duplicate the crystal object and move it to the side. Better to rename the objects here as well. Press F2 and change the name to crystal inside and the other to crystal outside. Duplicate the material as well. Press the number button and rename this material. You can change the color of this object to something different. Move and place this object roughly back in the center of the original crystal. Make it smaller so it is entirely covered by the outer crystal. If we go back in the solid view and turn on X-ray view, you can see how it looks. Currently the inner crystal won't be visible in the rendered view. There are some settings which we have to change to make it visible. You can turn off ray trace transmission for the inner crystal as it is not needed. Select the outer crystal and in the material settings you will see a thickness property. Click on it and add a value node. Now the inner crystal is also visible. This thickness property controls how thick the surface of the object will be. Use a low value for now. A small tip related to selecting objects where one object is inside another or not fully visible. For instance here, the inner crystal is not directly selectable. You can press Shift, Alt and click on the outer object to show a selection menu and pick the object you want to edit. In the outer crystal, change the index of refraction to see how it affects the overall look. In the same way, you can also change the refraction value of the inner crystal. Change the other settings like transmission, emission values to see how it looks. We will now add the bloom effect. For this, switch to the compositor editor. Enable the node settings from the top. You will see two nodes visible. In previous versions of Blender, bloom used to be easily available directly in the render properties. But now it has been removed from there, so we have to use the compositor. Shift A and go to filter and add a glare node. Drag and drop on the node connecting line to enable it. 
you will not see any change in the viewport yet. Go to viewport shader menu and in the end you will see compositor options. By default it will be disabled. Select the always option. You will see the glare enable and affecting the entire viewport. Change the glare type to bloom. Let's remove the background image so we only have our crystal models available. Switch back to the shader editor. From the top, select the world option. You may see the HDI node which we added at the start of the video. We are going to add a few more nodes which will allow us to keep the HDR lighting but hide the image from the viewport rendering. First add a mix shader node and drop it after the background node. Type it in the search bar if you are first time adding it. Drag a point from the factor value and add a light path node with is camera ray connecting to it. You will see the background is no longer visible but the lighting is there. From the second shader point of mix shader, drag out and add a background node. Here you can set any color you would like to use. I will be using black color. This layout I have always found useful when you just need the lighting from the HDRI image. Coming back to the compositor, we will explore a few more settings. In the glare node, you can change the bloom color, strength or size. I will duplicate the glare node and connect it also. But in the second node, I am changing the type from bloom to ghost. Play with the settings and see whichever you like. Check the other effects as well. One more node I would like to show here is the Kuhara node. Increase the size value and it adds a stylized painted effect all over your 3D model. The result may look low resolution here in this video but it is pretty interesting in case you are trying to get a quick paintry effect. However, keep in mind using this node will increase your render times. This node is completely optional and you can skip it. You can disable any node by pressing M on it. Back in the shader editor, in the properties of the outer crystal, increase the refraction to around 3. Again, change the values of the Veroni texture node and thickness. And this should complete the material part. Since this is a procedural material, you can use it on any other object. Duplicate the original orb material and use a different color. To make your render look clean, increase the samples count to 128 or 256 so there is less visual noise. I am not using denoising in this tutorial. As you can see, it blurs the result too much. One last thing is creating a rotating 360 degree camera movement around our crystal object and exporting an animated video. For this, first select your camera, enable the camera navigation view lock option. Move and position the camera so our crystal is fully visible. Change the output format to 1080 square. Set the view you would like to render out. Make sure to click the lock icon again so your camera does not changes. For creating a rotating animation, I will use a free blender add-on. Go to preferences. In the extensions menu, look for turn around camera and install it. By the way, I already have a separate tutorial on this if you like to check. Press N to open the side panel. You should see the animate tab. 
With your model selected and camera view is showing, click the turnaround button. I will split the viewport from the lower side and show the timeline editor in it. Play the animation from here. To save our animation, go to output properties, change the file format to fmpeg video. In the encoding, use video codec mpeg4, quality to high or perceptually lossless and finally render the animation. From here you can continue improving the overall look and explore different designs. This completes the tutorial. The project file is available for free download on my Gumroad page. This tutorial is based on one of my previous crystal video when Blender 2.8 was released. So it was time for a new updated one. I hope you find this video useful. Please consider subscribing and press the like button for more future updates. Thank you very much for watching.